Welcome to the Mass at St. Anne's uh, on this New Year's Day. Uh, we're going to open with What Child Is This? It refers to Mary, and today uh, it's a special feast for Mary. Number 461 in the Catholic Book of Worship. What child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping? Who angels greet with anthems sweet while shepherds watch are keeping? This, this is Christ, the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the Son of Mary. Why lies he in such mean a state where ox and ass are feeding? Good Christian, fear for sinners here. The silent word is pleading. This, this is Christ the King. Whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. We pray together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. My sisters and brothers, peace be with you. Your spirit. And a blessed new year to you all, and a new year, a blessing to all of you joining us at home this day on this uh, universal feast of Mary, the Mother of God. This feast goes back a very, very long time into the early reaches of the church uh, in the first 400 years or so, uh, when we wrestled with kind of our own understanding and our appreciation for the gift of Mary, the Mother of God. The ancient Greeks used to refer to her as the Theotokos, which is a very fancy word that simply means a God-bearer. She bore God into the world. And so we wanted, as a church, to recognize that distinguished gift, that grace, that blessing, that poured into the world uh, through the heart of a woman just like ourselves. And it really does um, lend us to examining how we each of us, through virtue of our own baptism, our own life, bear a living Christ, the living Lord, to our own families and loved ones each day. And so as we collectively join our prayer to honor our Blessed Mother this morning, we also have a tradition of praying for peace. And we pray that the peace that rested so firmly in the womb of our Blessed Mother may also be ours this day as we begin a new year filled with anticipation and with hope. So as we begin our prayer, let us once again acknowledge our sinfulness, lay aside our pride, and pray for God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you reconcile the world to one another and to our Father. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division in our lives. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us at the right hand of God our Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May God forgive us in our sin and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks 
for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through the blessings of our Blessed Mother bestowed upon the human race the grace of eternal salvation, grant that we may experience the intercession of her through who we were found worthy to receive the author of life. Our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever, Amen. We are now seated as we listen to God's word. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord spoke to Moses, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, Thus you shall bless the children of Israel. You shall say to them, The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they shall put my name on the children of Israel, and I will bless them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. gracious to us and bless us. May God be gracious to us and bless us. May God be gracious to us and bless us. Make his face to shine upon us that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. May God be gracious to us and bless us. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. May God be gracious to us and bless us. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, has blessed us. May God continue to bless us. Let all the ends of the earth revere him. 
May God be gracious to us and bless us. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption to sonship. And because you are sons and daughters, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer slave but son, and if son, then also heir through God, the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to to God. God. Thank you. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Long ago God spoke to our ancestors by the prophets. In those last days he has spoken to us by the Son. Alleluia, alleluia. May the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The shepherds went with haste to Bethlehem and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary, Mary treasured all of these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child. And he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of the Lord. I invite you to be seated for a moment. Mary, Mary treasured all these words and pondered them. She pondered them in her heart. That one sentence in today's gospel, I think, can capture for ourselves as Christians this first day of the year, this day that we lay aside to reverence our Blessed Mother and to also rededicate ourselves to living as people of peace. I think these words can offer us a little push in the right direction. We often refer to our Blessed Mother as the perfect disciple. She's the only human being in all of history that got it right from the very beginning. She's the only human being in all of creation that got it right from the very start. And to be clear, over these many weeks, as you've heard me say, it certainly wasn't an easy start. And it was far from perfect, and it was far from ideal. And yet we have the example given to us of deep faith, of confidence and trust 
in God's call for her to bear God into the world. What we know of our Blessed Mother Mary in Scripture is enough for me. It's, it's enough. I don't, have to, I don't have to try and invent creatively why I can use Mary, our Blessed Mother, as a model to deepen my faith. Those words, how she heard from others about who her son was to be, must have been jarring and unsettling. But rather than quick to respond, all Luke says is that Mary pondered what had been said to her in her heart. I often think of how often I'm quick to open my mouth for commentary and for a response to things that are unsettling and disturbing to myself. And yet, as people of faith, we're called not to let that be our first response. I think our mother tells us today shows us, I think would be a better way to describe it, that our first act is to ponder what is before us and what we're living. To really, truly, in the stillness and the quiet and even a little bit of silence, rediscover what God is revealing to us through other people. And it's a challenge to remind ourselves that those words of invitation by God to us often come to us in very unexpected people and in unexpected experiences, which invites us to remain vigilant, to be watchful, to be attentive to how God's Spirit is revealing God's call for each of us in the day-to-day ordinariness of life. And to ponder them first, but to not just ponder them without direction, but to ponder them the way Mary did and the way she would throughout all of Scripture. And it's a very little part in Scripture to which Mary and her life is revealed. Very, very small snippets mostly at the beginning of Christ's life and, of course, at the end. And Jesus' final words on the cross, where he offers his own mother to the world, those words, here is your mother, that we believe he uttered to John are words that are given to us this day. And to do as she has done. And again, none of anything that Mary did in this life was extraordinary. It was her faithfulness in the little things, trying to do as well as she could, given everything that was going on in her life and around her. And I can't help but think, as we begin this new year, maybe that's really the message. For us to pray for the grace to be courageous in asking first, before anything else, how will this lead me closer to God? How will any choice, decision I make each day, how will that lead me closer to God? That's really as simple as it gets. And I can't help but think with all the enthusiasm of a new year that comes before us, 
all kinds of resolutions and desires and hopes. And believe me, you know as well as I do, there's a lot of hope in people's lives right now. They're clinging, they're holding on to, they're looking for something, longing for some kind of prosperity, of an end to uncertainty, and of an end to living in fear. To turn those feelings the way Mary, our mother, would have. And to simply ask, how can I grow closer to Christ in this moment? For it is in Jesus, it is in his life, his words, his grace, that I'll rediscover all of those things. And as Mary worked tirelessly to constantly be in the presence of her son, so constantly we are called with that same level of enthusiasm, with that same mindful purpose to draw closer to Christ. And that's my prayer for you this New Year's Day, this day of new beginnings, this day of peace, this day in which we honor Mary, our mother, that we too have the humility to lay what I feel is right and best aside in favor of truly discerning where Christ is calling me to be. And that will not involve anything with a lot of flash and awe that level of faithfulness will often never be seen by anyone other than the person you're loving. But that's the point, isn't it? Those of you who are mothers understand that better than I ever will. You know that your children discovered love firsthand from the witness of you and their father. That's where it all began. And it doesn't matter if it's seen by anybody. The reality is, it will be felt. And so be committed on this first day of the year to expressing and sharing Christ's love, forgiveness, and compassion to those who will be entrusted to your care this coming year. And don't love them as you would. And don't forgive them as you feel forgiveness ought to be offered. But love and forgive, heal and be compassionate only as Christ would. And in so doing, we allow Christ to be seen, to be felt, and to be heard by others. And that, that is our gift of faith. In response to God's word, let us confess once more who it is we are and what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Each time we gather for prayer, we gather not only for our needs, but for the needs of those entrusted to our care. With confidence we offer to our Father our prayer of petition today. 
<clears throat> For Pope Francis, Archbishop Murray, Father Paul, and all priests and laity, may God bless them and guide them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Church, called to be a sign of God's presence in the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations and religions intent on building the kingdom of peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of God's trust in promises, even in adverse circumstances, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and the shut-ins and those who minister to them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our personal intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For hearts that welcome the poor as of pardon me. For hearts that welcome the poor as bearers of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the faithful departed, may they share in Christ's promise of resurrection by being raised up on the last day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And sadly, we pray in solidarity with our community this morning. There is a great deal of violence that was suffered in our communities last evening. So we just pray for those who are grieving the loss of a loved one today. We pray for those in law enforcement, especially, who are engaged at this very moment with bringing the offender to justice. We pray that God's peace may prevail and protect and console those who are wounded this day. We pray to you, Lord. And let us pray in thanksgiving on this first day of the year for all of our benefactors here at St. Anne's, for many of you who are not even living here, that have been very generous financially and with prayer to our parish community. We pray God's blessing upon all our benefactors for our parish in thanksgiving for your generosity. May God bless you in this new year with health and happiness. We pray to you, Lord. Good and gracious Father, you know our needs far better than we ourselves. Hear the prayers we offer before you and answer them according to your holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. We are now seated as we prepare our offering. The offertory hymn is number 613 in the Catholic Book of Worship 2, Sing of Mary, Pure and Lowly. Sing of Mary, pure and lowly, Virgin Mother undefiled. Sing of God's own Son, most holy, who became her little child, fairest child of fairest mother, God the Lord, who came to earth, word made flesh, our very brother, takes our nature by his birth. Sing of Jesus, son of Mary, in the home at Nazareth. Call and labor cannot weary, love enduring unto death. Constant was the love he gave her, only he went forth from her side. For they who preach and heal and suffer till on Calvary he died. Pray, my friends, that these our gifts be made acceptable to God, our loving and very generous Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and the glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Amen. 
Almighty God, who in your kindness begin all good things and bring them to fulfillment, grant to us who find joy in this solemnity of Mary, the Mother of God, that just as we glory in the beginnings of your grace, so one day we may rejoice in its completion. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the Lord be with you. Also in the Spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. That's right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise and glorify your name on the solemnity of the motherhood of the Blessed Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise you, and all the heavenly host adore you, and we too proclaim your glory as we pray. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Send forth your spirit to sanctify these gifts so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread and handed it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup and once more giving you thanks, handed it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. We stand as we proclaim the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that in the sharing of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Murray, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the apostles, the martyrs, Saint Anne, Saint John the Twenty-Third, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may we merit to share in eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, 
Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Gathering our prayer and praise into one voice, let us pray together for the coming of God's will, using the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us in all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, and now say unto us today, I leave you peace, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the newborn Christ be with you always. And take a moment to offer that peace to one another. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. Lord Jesus Christ, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my, my soul, soul shall be healed. It's an opportunity for those of you at home now to pray for the grace of spiritual communion on this first day of the year to invite our Lord into your heart and grant you every grace your life requires. The uh, hymn for communion and the meditation is number 87 in glory and praise. Hail Mary, gentlewoman. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of death. Amen. Gentlewoman, 
quiet light morning star so strong and bright gentle mother peaceful dove teach us wisdom teach us love you were chosen by the Father. You were chosen for the Son. You were chosen from all women and for woman, shining one. Gentle woman, quiet night, morning star, so strong and bright, gentle mother, peaceful dove, teach us wisdom. Teach us Let us stand and conclude our prayer. Almighty Lord, we have received this heavenly sacrament with joy. Grant that it may lead us to eternal life, for we rejoice to proclaim the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of your Son and Mother of the Church. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. Spirit. May God's gentle blessing descend upon and remain with you this day in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed beginning to our new year. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Just before starting the uh, final hymn, which is going to be number 460 in the Catholic Book of Worship 2, the first Noel, I just want to do something a little unusual, put in a plug for a show on Netflix involving the Holy Father, uh, nice. uh, Pope Francis. Uh, uh, it's a series of four sort of documentaries with Francis commenting on different lives throughout the world, especially people of his generation. And it's a beautiful thing. Crystal and I watched it, the whole thing last night, and I guess it was a wonderful thing. Perfect. And, Heading into the new year, something very positive for once. So that's a word from our sponsor, folks. Those yes. of you at home, word <laughs> of our sponsor. Yeah. Thank you much for that, Mark. Okay. He had the Holy Father Pope Francis had a beautiful homily uh, for this morning too in Rome. It was seven hours earlier than the rest of you got up, but it was excellent. If you get a chance to read it online, you might want to take advantage of that today as well. Go ahead, Mark. I won't cut you off anymore. <laughs> The first Noel, the angel did say, was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay, in fields where they lay keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night that was so deep. Noel, 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 born is the King of Israel. They look 
Looked up and saw a star shining in the east beyond them far, and to the earth it gave great light, and so it continued both day and night. No Same star on Christ men came from country far to seek for the king was their intent and to follow the star wherever it went. No well, no well, no well, no the king of the